And greetings from my kitchen studio in San Francisco, and welcome to BRC and Friends, a regular-ish 30-minute Google Hangout with me, Bruce Reyes Chow, where I chat with friends and adventurers from around the interwebs. Today, I welcome to the show Laura Herod from A Fair Share, a, Fair Share, a global coalition of social enterprises supporting women's economic freedom. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so Laura was born in Phoenix, Arizona, where my in-laws are. She did not grow up in the retirement community, though. Um, her Texas parents will attest that she has ra they have raised her right on barbecue, Tex-Mex, and Longhorn football. I'm from California. We don't actually pay attention to college football here, but <laughs> I hear that it's popular in other parts of the country. She lived in New York City for five years, earning her BA in politics, philosophy, and economics at King's College, and working for a gospel rescue mission uh, on the Lower East Side. Self-proclaimed nerd, Laura moved to Nashville, Tennessee to work on her master's in community development and action at Vanderbilt. Laura joined the Nashville-based social enterprise Thistle Farms during her studies. She now runs communications for the latest Thistle Farms initiative, Shared Trade, a fair share for women. She's thrilled to be working for a global initiative to support women's economic freedom. You can find Laura patronizing coffee shops or eating her favorite brunch spots, and her favorite appliance is her waffle maker. Um, also, so... Uh, before we jump in, though, let's take a moment to check out all the links. I'm going to put links below on the show. You'll get to see things from Laura and myself. Um, if you want to tweet along with us now, if you're live, or if you want to get to us later through the YouTube uh, channel, please use B. Reyes Chow or Shared Trade. Um, and then Her <laughs> Laura has the best Twitter handle ever. It's <laughs> awesome. Uh, use the hashtag BRC and Friends. As usual, our time is broken into three segments. The first will be centered around the interests and passions of my guest. The second, around a current event or two. And finally, last words where I'll ask a few random questions. So, all right, we're going to get started. So, Laura works with this great group called Thistle Farms. A friend of mine said, she needs to be on your show. She's this is an important person. You need to talk with her. So, as technology allows us to do, I sent her a note. She said, sure. So, uh, Laura, first qu question, you know, really basic. Tell us about Thistle Farms. Uh, what do they do? Who are they? You know, what do they work for? And how did you get involved? Okay, great. Um, Thistle Farms is the social enterprise of Magdalene. Magdalene is a community, a residential community of women survivors of prostitution, addiction, and life on the streets. And they live together and they recover together and then they can come work for Thistle Farms. And so Thistle Farms creates bath and body products. Uh, we're known for our lotions and soaps and lavender scented candles. Um, but we also have a paper and sewing studio and there's a little cafe on Charlotte Pike in Nashville uh, that is just beautiful and a great place to get work done. Um, at Thistle Farms, this just last year, celebrated a million dollars in revenue. So to give you a sense of the scale of it, there are um, about 50 women from Magdalene employed through Thistle Farms. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's the basics of that. Great. So, uh, so when you say employed by, so they're working to create the product as well as working in some of the groups that are, I mean, some of the organizations that are out there, is that, and they're getting training and all that? Well, so it's all in-house employment at Thistle Farms. So okay. they work in manufacturing and they create all of the like candles and we make, you know, healing scented oils and, you know, it's all natural products. So the idea is that uh, you're you're kind of working with healing ingredients while you're experiencing the healing in your own life. Um, so it's really be it's beautiful and everything there is a metaphor and uh, it's a very inspiring place to be. Um, so I got involved there <laughs> through my studies of community development. I uh, got introduced to the Reverend Becca Stevens. She's an Episcopal priest here in town and the chaplain at Vanderbilt and she founded Magdalene and Thistle Farms. Um, so I sat down with her and I had no idea what I was going to do and she said, we need somebody to figure out what shared trade is and is going to be. <laughs> and now I'm here about 10 months later. Cool. So, so tell, us, tell us about this shared trade. I mean, I think the, the taglines are great. I mean, you know, like it sounds really cool, but what, what is it? I mean, what, uh -huh. what are you doing? Yeah, so in the last five years or so, Thistle Farms has built relationships with Social enterprises doing the same thing, employing women who have survived, you know, violence, extreme poverty, addiction, you name it. And we're talking on a global scale. So Becca's traveled to Kenya, to Rwanda, to Ecuador, and uh, has gotten to know 
you know, good-hearted people, entrepreneurs who are trying to create opportunities for women. So about two years ago, she was in London and she was thinking about kind of the global value chain, you know, how something gets made in Rwanda and gets sold to a distributor who sells it to a supplier who sells it to a big company in the U.S. And the person who made, let's say it's a purse, got $2 when it was sold for $45 in the States. And so Shared Trade is trying to do something about that so that the woman gets maybe $15 instead of $2. Mm -hmm. So we have a website called sharedtrade.org where we have 14 partner social enterprises representing 10 different countries. They're making beautiful handmade silk scarves from Cambodia. They're making uh, table runners and serviettes for, out of you know African wax fabric in Mozambique. They're making laptop cases, <laughs> you know, kind of you name it, home, bath and body products, all the Thistle Farms products are uh, on our site. And uh, we're, we're ensuring that they get like a higher percentage of the profit margin than they would have otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also kind of committed to core principles about what it looks like to create healing environments for women so that kind of the cycle of oppression or uh, the environment that they're in, they can find freedom from that. That's just awesome. So how did, you know, there are a lot of things, you know, you, you went to King's College and you went to graduate school, but, you know, how did you eventually get into this, that you decided you wanted to do this, this is important enough for you? I mean, there's so many options for folks coming out of the school now. I mean, what, what was it that spurred you? Was it a person, an event, or is this how you were raised? I mean, what, what brought you to this place? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would say I would always, I've always been passionate about people who were on the fringes, <laughs> who kind of maybe didn't fit into the main social structure. But then when you live in New York City, you see, you have visible poverty around you, especially these days, you know, and homelessness is at, you know, epidemic proportions. And so I started working at a homeless shelter, and the main thing is that they needed to be able to be economically sufficient. And so... That's how I first got involved with social enterprise, and um, and through that have kind of landed in working with women specifically, and the potential to enact global transformation. I thought it's just so, so inspiring for me personally, and um, and and to see the hope and joy when somebody uh, is is getting a fair wage or is getting a fair share of, of the work that they've done and, and now can buy a car or buy a house. Um, it's unbelievable. And it's, it's, just, it's the best work, I think. <laughs> and, and that's I mean, this is awesome. But you're, you're running the communications for Share Trade. So is that part of your background? Mm -hmm. or are you learning on the job? And what's, what, how, how is that uh, working for you? Yeah. So, I mean, I have always been a bit of a writer. And when you study things like philosophy, politics, and economics, you write a lot. Um, and so I just kind of picked up things here and there. About a year ago, I started a web magazine with some friends. So those skills have definitely played a part in uh, helping with shared trade. But you know, you're always learning. Yeah. So how do you compete with everything else that's out there right now? I mean, there's just so many things that people can get to and, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. How, how are you finding um, – How what things are you doing to help try to get the get uh, shared trade out there and – get your word out with, in, in the midst of so much information that's, that's coming at us. What are the things you're finding effective? Uh-oh, I might have lost Laura. Did you lose you, me? Oh, nope, you're back on. Hey! All right, I got your voice. Did you hear that question? Are you there? Oh, no, yeah. what happened? Uh oh I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Bruce? Yep, I hear you. Oh, okay, great. Okay, um, back on. <laughs> okay. We survived. Um, okay, so how do we get the word out in this competitive environment? I think the important thing for us is to share the authentic story of women who are now experiencing freedom, who are now contributing economically, whose lives have been transformed because of an alternative structure. Um, and, you know, Thistle Farms is well loved in Nashville and is well known and so um, we like to say that we're just spreading the Thistle Farms message that love heals. Love is the most powerful force for change in the world and through shared trade we're gonna spread that word on a global scale. Hmm. 
That's great. That's great. Well, are there um, are there any uh, big things that are coming out soon? I mean, if folks are like, okay, so then what? Who are you working with? What kind of products are you doing? Um, is there anything you can talk about like right now, and then anything coming up? Well, right now, our big promotion is that we're doing free shipping through the month of October. Right. So jump on that. Um, and I mean, we have these beautiful silk scarves that are perfect for fall. They're handmade in Cambodia. You know, bright oranges, bright greens. Um, we also have some just like stunning jewelry from Uganda and Ethiopia. But the big thing is if you're Christmas shopping or you know, beginning to think about your Christmas shopping, um, we're going to have a line of aprons from Kenya to sell during the holiday season, some beautiful handmade paper Christmas cards, just all sorts of um, perfect little gifts and things, stocking stuffers, things for your mom, for your dad. That's great. Mm -hmm. I, sh I should have had you kind of bring product on. You could have held them up. and. Oh, yeah, I could have done Vanna White <laughs> for you. There you go. Here's one. That's <laughs> I mean, awesome. I some candles, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it's so. I mean, what? I mean, this sounds like pretty e exciting work. I mean, have you seen a growth in people trying to shop more socially consciously? You know, fair trade has been big, but it seems like it's so much now. You know, how do you navigate all that? Have you seen a, a people just thinking differently about how they're shopping? I think so. You know, I think fair trade is so huge right now. But the beauty of, of kind of these cooperative models or these coalitions is that you get to hear a story of a real person. And I think people want to buy products where they know the name and the face of the person who created that product. And, and so part of it is definitely kind of a socially conscious awareness. But it's also kind of an environmentally conscious awareness that I want to know kind of where this fabric came from, what is it involved in its production, you know, from the ingredients to how the people are treated, kind of all of that. Right. And so, yeah, sure trade trying to perpetuate that for sure. That's great. That's great. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing about that. That's that's all good stuff. But you are not just that person, right? You, um, I do the right. second segment where, you know, all of us. Um, sometimes we may may want to be one dimensional. Other times, people may want us to be, but none of us are. So, um, I always ask folks, what are some of the other things that you're interested in, both? you know, professionally, hobby, or just random. And so one of the things that you mentioned before is you started an online magazine called, called In Earnest. Can you tell us a little bit about the magazine? Definitely. Um, so In Earnest is about women trying to navigate the good life. We're hosting a conversation and inviting friends to come and talk about, you know, what it looks like to be a thoughtful person, but also a person who carries influence and is successful. Uh, in all things, you know, professional and personal. Um, and basically, it just started with six of us having brunch on a monthly basis, and we realized we were having conversations that we felt like a lot of women across the country, maybe across the world, are also having. So we wanted to create a space for that to be public, for people to be invited into um, to talking about art and talking about creativity, but also professional business budgeting <laughs> all in the same place okay well I was gonna say what are so what are some of the what are some of the topics you've taken on recently that you think folks might want to know about oh yeah well so internet just celebrated our our one year anniversary so kind of the theme of this month is celebration or our one year anniversary yeah so the, for the whole month we're talking about what it looks like to celebrate well um, and to uh, kind of pay attention to the important moments in your life and um, to do that in an authentic way. So kind of every month at Inertis we have a different theme and we have some articles about that theme, some articles not about that theme uh, and it's really fun. So oh, cool. Oh, cool. I'm kind That's of the resident community nerd so all my topics are about people and how people get along and things <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, well, speaking of community and all that, one of the other things that you had mentioned in when, in our communications was that you love to just sit on park benches in the city. Um, and so, w what's that about? <laughs> well, so New York City is a place where people are just not stopping, and so you have these parks that are intended to create rest. But like Madison Square Park is a commuters park; people are always just walking through it and maybe eating lunch, but always on the go. And I just loved to be like the one not on their phone, 
not moving and just kind of soaking it in. Right. Um, so are you are you are you, yeah. <laughs> are you people watching or are you are you live are, are you doing performance art? I mean, what kind of are you? Uh, what what's going on while you're sitting on the bench in the city? In, in your... Oh man, I wish I was doing performance <laughs> art. Um, mostly it's people watching. It's I mean, it, New York is a great place for people watching. Vanderbilt's campus is also a great place <laughs> for people watching. Um, yeah. And, you know, sometimes, too, I'm just kind of staring off and, like, thinking about deep thoughts. <laughs> and then, you know... That's my daughter. She, she just, my, my daughter is like, I like to just think deep thoughts. Like, oh, okay, I, I, I don't do that very often. I guess I should probably do that more often. Um, so, I, uh, so you lived in New York, though. And uh, so what was the... You know, you're in Nashville now. Like, soon you're going to be in San Francisco because you're clearly doing the tours of all the cool cities in the United States. Uh but uh, what what's the difference between New York and Nashville that you've noticed so far? Well, I think the biggest difference in Nashville is that you can like choose to be in a very urban feeling environment or choose to never be in a very urban feeling environment. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of all here, but you don't have to like buy into it. So you can have I can have like a very New York feeling night where I eat ramen and go see Arcade Fire in concert. But I could also then, like, the next night be in a field by a barn, you know, and having a fire. So it's like you can – I just think Nashville has so many opportunities because it's small to enjoy quite starkly different cultures, whereas New York, it's not kind of always, like, the multicultural vibe happening. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know a lot of people that, move, that go to New York, they just get tired. Like, it's always yeah. messed up. And, you know, I've never been there longer for probably a month at a time, but um, I just love New York. That's one of my favorite places mm -hmm. in the world. If I was going to go to New York, uh, since you lived there for so long, three places that I, that I need to eat. Ooh. Um, oh, wow. Okay. There's, there's just so many. It's hard to know where to begin. <laughs> uh well, I mean, Arnold's is the number one meet and three spot, so you have to go there. Right. Uh, there's a new place in Germantown, new. I don't know how new it is, but it's <laughs> called Rolf and Daughters that I've heard is phenomenal, and it does, like, a uh, twist on Italian food. And then uh, I would have to say, if you want a good burger, uh, Burger Up is a spot in 12 South. Burger up. All right. Yeah. Well, I I shared with you off the off the show that I tried to get my daughter to go to New York, but all the New York schools have been dropped off the college list, so I just have to go on my own now. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So um, I got I have some questions for you. So as I as I mentioned, um, we kind of end our time with doing these very quick um, sh questions, kind of like the Actors Studio, and you can expand on them as much or as little as you want. Um, and then uh, you will ask you that to lift up one organization or person or something at the end. All right. So here's your first question. Uh, what was your first concert? It was a Young Messiah concert, and I was in fifth grade. And I, Avalon was the highlight of my night. Yeah, young Messiah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like in the '90s, that was big, like Christian music yeah, festival. Well, you know, I've heard of Avalon. I don't think yeah. I've ever heard of Young Messiah. Well, they, I, Young Messiah was not like a group. It was like the name of the... Oh, okay. I was like, that seems oh, kind like, of like a yeah. pretty lofty title to give yourself. I get you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Young <laughs> Messiah. Well, are you now? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no delusions of grandeur there. All right. Um, smell or sound that reminds you of your childhood? Um, chocolate chip pancakes. Chocolate chip. You know, I mentioned to you that Sunday morning pancakes is apparently this amazing pancake mix from Nashville. Mm -hmm. The previous guest, hum Humming House, has singing their jingle. So we'll put. I'll put a little link on this so people can check that out. But apparently there are some darn good pancakes. All right. Your first or your worst job? Mm. Let's see. Well, so my first job was kind of helping out at the church with the youth ministry, and what that meant was that I get to eat free lunch every day. So there that you was go. Awesome. Great. We'll just assume that was also not your worst job. We'll just even no, if it was, no. we, <laughs> 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 all 
<laughs> okay, and if you can switch places for one day with any person in the world, you get all their talent, resources, and connections, who would it be? Oh, man. Maybe I, I think I'm watching the show Nashville too much because the first person that popped to my mind was Connie Britton. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yep. Hey, there's your answer. There's your answer. It's, it's so funny. I've asked this question to a couple of people. This like is the biggest stumper in the world. It's like that question for some reason. And you just right. got to go with your gut. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pay it forward. One organization that more people should know about. Uh, it's called The House on Beekman. It's in the Bronx, New York, and they do amazing work with young moms and with the kids and I have some dear friends that, that work and play there. Great. I will make sure that I include all of those those links and things. So, um, yeah. so uh, thank you, Laura, for hanging out with me for just this brief time. It's been really great to hear about uh, Thistle Creek and share and all these things that you are, are Thistle Farm, sorry, that you're doing. Um, uh -huh. I will, um, as, as I usually do for this, folks, I'll have a bunch of links down below on the YouTube channel. We'll get all the pop-ups and make it all pretty and all that so you can make sure you can connect with Laura and all our organizations. She's obviously doing a lot of stuff, which is great. So uh, thanks for tuning in for this episode of BRC and Friends. Thanks again to Laura Hare for hanging out with us today. Laura, you want to wave goodbye? Let me get you on. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. And uh, please be sure to check out the episode recap, which will be posted by the end of the day. Um, I'll introduce and, and all the links and put everything on there. Also, please take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bling! Um, and share this episode with your friends, and be sure to connect with us with all the links that are listed below. So until next time on BRC and Friends, please keep talking because there are times when silence is not an option. We'll see you next time.